We know what an observer does from a point of view of quantum physics, but we don't know who or what the observer actually is. Doesn't mean we haven't tried to find an answer. We've looked, we've gone inside of your head, we've gone into every orifice you have to find something called an observer. And there's nobody home, there's nobody in the brain, there's nobody in the cortical regions of the brain, there's nobody in the subcortical regions or the limbic regions of the brain, there's nobody there called an observer. And yet we all had this experience of being something called an observer. The universe is mostly empty. We like to think of space as empty and matter as solid. But in fact, there is essentially nothing to matter whatsoever. It's completely insubstantial. Take a look at an atom. We think of it as a kind of hard ball. Then we say, oh, well, no, not really. It's this little tiny point of, of really dense matter right at the center surrounded by a kind of fluffy probability cloud of electrons popping in and out of existence. But then it turns out that that's not even right. Even, even the nucleus, which we think of as so dense, pops in and out of existence just as readily as the electrons do. The most solid thing you can say about all this insubstantial matter is that it's more like a thought. It's like a concentrated bit of information. What makes up things are not a more things, but what makes up things are ideas, concepts, information. First of all, let's talk about the subatomic world. And then we'll talk about what it's telling us about reality. The first thing I want to tell you about the subatomic world is it's totally a fantasy created by mad physicists trying to figure out what the heck is going on when they do these little experiments. By little experiments, I mean big energy in little spaces and little pieces of time. It gets pretty nutty at that realm of things. And so subatomic physics was invented to try to figure that all out. We need a new science down there. It's called quantum physics and it is subject to a whole range of debatable hypotheses, thoughts, feelings, intuitions as to what the heck is really going on. Matter is not what we have long thought it to be. Uh, to the scientist, matter has always been thought of as sort of the ultimate in that which is static and predictable. Within all the atoms and molecules, all the space within the, the particles take up an insignificant amount of the of the volume of an atom or molecule, the fundamental particles. The rest of it is vacuum. What seems to happen is that particles appear and disappear all the time. So where do they go when they're not here? Now, that question is tricky. I'm going to give you two answers. Answer number one, they go into a, an alternative universe where the people in that universe are asking the same question about those particles when they come into our universe. They say, where do they go? 